if the client trusts your brand or your company, they will provide the information to you. Do brands actually know their customers? Do they engage with them or do they just interact? Because it's clearly not the same. So I think interaction and engagement is like going on a date or getting married, right? On your first date, there is no expectation or, or you know, love, let's say. So to really engage with users, you kind of have to know them, right? That's what many companies have been realizing for the last couple of years. To have users' data is to know them better. And knowing them better means you can truly engage. But as big tech companies like Amazon, Google, or Facebook overexploit this resource, some problems about users' privacy begin to arise. At Globant, we help companies around the world reinvent themselves and find their way forward through digital and cognitive transformation. We help them create a way forward. Welcome to Unscripted Tech, a Globant original podcast about the trends that are changing how the technology game is played and about what we do with them. My name is Rebecca Reed, and I'm a digital marketing strategist at Globant. Over the next six episodes, we'll be talking about technology trends that are changing the game for companies across all industries. Each episode will feature conversations with Globers from around the world, disruptors, trailblazers, and igniters that will channel innovation and creativity to provide a better understanding of what comes next with each of these tech trends. Let's dive in. On today's episode, we'll discuss how brands are using the user's data to build a closer relationship with their customers. How can we leverage this to create something exceptional, different from other brands? Wonderful or exceptional experiences in, in this context of where we are full of stimuli and, and challenges. For me, an exception is when uh, a brand or a company is there when I need them. Gonzalo Zarza is a data and artificial intelligence studio partner at Globant. He has a PhD in high performance computing, which is key to gathering information from users. He's been working at Globant for nine years. Brands have to be there when you need them, right? Delfina Kazal is a director of the digital marketing studio at Globant. She has been working in digital marketing for 17 years. We are seeing a lot of new market trends uh, and, and new regulations around what can companies do with the data that they are collecting from the users. Pablo Monque is global head of digital sales at Globant. And although he's been working at the company for only six months, he hit the bullseye with this comment. How can we interact with users' data to engage with them? How can brands deliver exceptional experiences? How can they generate something really meaningful for users? I think one of the, the things that is, it's kind of like a new concept that, that I think is, is great to think about and that really helps us put our minds into the customer and is instead of thinking of ROI, which is great, and we should, of course, always think of return on, in, on investment, um, I think we have to think of return on engagement, right? So what it... The, Put our heads and put our thinking caps or our hats, I would say, for the customer in the customer, right? And and think so when the customer engages with, with us, they're thinking, so what am I getting out of this relationship, right? What do I get out of when I um, interact with your video? What do I get out when I leave my information? Um, when I download a white paper? When I read your blog post? And are they going to be smarter? Are they going to be, I don't know, richer? Um, what is it that they're getting out of this relationship or this interaction? I think that is like point number one, right? Um, re thinking of return on engagement, thinking of the customer instead of us as brands. And then I think another one is also kind of be useful. Um, instead of thinking right? How do I sell to you? It's how do I help you, right? Um, I think that there's a really good example uh, for Bombay Sapphire and what they do, and they have more than a million uh, fans in Facebook, uh, for example, is instead of talking about their product, they talk about how to make amazing cocktails. 
and that's solving a problem, right? Um, it's it's helping customers um, solve something. They they, they want to make great cocktails. Why are they buying a gin? Because they want to make great cocktails. I cannot agree more with you, Delphi. I think that uh, <laughs> every, all all you said it's 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 a current state of of marketing and what brands are trying to do. And basically, as you said, I think that it's all about experiences, but we have to take into account that to bring that experiences to the users and to the clients, the company the companies need data. And that's a really, really important point because we are seeing a lot of new market trends and, and new regulations around what can companies do with the data that they are collecting from the users. So first of all, I think it's really, really interesting to talk about um, uh, data privacy because for sure uh, the, the users are expecting somehow uh, to have a personalized experience with brands and so on, but they are aware that brands are capturing their data. So I think that every company should have like a really strong, um, a really strong strategy around how to manage all the data how to be fully transparent with users and with clients, uh, and, and, and how to manage the consent of that users and, and all the clients to, to be compliant with the, with, the, with the data privacy regulations that we are seeing, not only in Europe, but in the US, but in Latin America and, and, and a lot of other places. Uh, so I think that this is a really, really interesting point because, as I said, users are expecting a personalized experience through all their journey or through all their interaction with the brands, but they need companies need to be really, really clear on how they collect that data and how and how they use that data to personalize the, their experience. And I think that this is a really great point to to talk about. Let me go back a little bit regarding the experiences and the context, um, because this thing of having wonderful or exceptional experiences in in this context of where we are full of stimuli and challenges. For me, an exception is when uh, a brand or a company is there when I need them. Uh, and so when the experience and, and interaction with them is seamless and frictionless, and they evolve to adapt to what's happening in the context, in my case, for instance, and this is also related with uh, private data personalization, that's for me exceptional in this context. For instance, ways, that used to be the go-to application for driving through the city, adapt the, the way they operate to offer you where to stop by when you are going back home in the context of the, the pandemics and where you could drive through to get food. Because they know that based on this specific uh, way of doing things in, in the pandemics, uh, the um, opportunity of get something to eat or to drink while you are driving to, to your home or to the, the, the workplace is extremely important. So that's based on the smart use of data. They understand the context. They understand that you're going from one point to the other and that everything is closed. So they're using that private data, let's say, uh, in a way that is not intrusive to you. And I think there, there's something great that you said at the beginning, right? So that you said when uh, brands have to be there when you need them, right? And I think it, that's one other point, be useful, right? So I think, for example, there's uh, some pharmaceutical companies, right, that are trying to be useful instead of selling, you know, the, the, their um, medicine and the therapy, they're actually talking about the disease, right? So, for example, uh, you know, having diabetes and how you can have, you know, they talk about health, having relationships, dating with diabetes. So they talk about more, the problem and coping with that instead of trying to sell to you that medicine or that therapy. And I think that creates a, a connection. We hear you guys talked a lot about engagement. That word engagement gets thrown around a lot, right? Do we really know the difference between engagement and interaction? That's a great question. And I think there's a really big difference. I think interaction is something, and I'm going to put this word and, and we're talking about data, but yes, I'm going to put this word in and it's about feeling, right? Yeah, so I think interaction and engagement is 
like going on a date or getting married, right? <laughs> on your first date, there is no expectation or, or you know, love, let's say. Um, hopefully, if you're getting engaged, um, there is something more, right? There's a feeling, there is, um, you want more. So I think that's, that's the big difference. You can interact, but not have the feeling that uh, you want more. And then if you engage, if you're really engaged with something, I think that that's like one, one step up, let's say. Absolutely. And you could have high interaction with no engagement and the other way around. And that's also related to what we were discussing, right? Uh, you know that you're engaged with something when you go to look for it, when you actually need it. And it doesn't matter if you use it or you consume the content on a daily basis. It could be once per year, once per quarter, whatever it's needed, but you know and you go directly to consume that from that brand. That's for me engagement. And it's highly related to feelings uh, because you trust that and you actually believe that they will provide what you actually need. Interaction could be extremely different. You could interact with something and hate it, for instance, uh, and that's not engagement, at least for me, right? And how specifically can we use that data to boost experiences for our users? The users are now much more empowered than ever, and they expect that transparency. So uh, they, they expect to receive something back, something in exchange uh, for, for giving their data. So it's really, really important for brands to understand what the users need and what are they expecting and what can a brand offer to a user or to a client in exchange of their data. Because the user will be expecting a, a personalized experience and for sure for that we'll need data, but they need to give something back to the user. And I can put here a really cool example from Amazon. And so I think that it's it, it's really, really nice. And so, so basically, I think that last year uh, or, or a couple of years ago, Amazon start to, to, to give to some some of their of their clients some vouchers uh, and they ask them to <laughs> just upload their tickets uh, to, of, of purchasing in in other in, in other companies like um, like Walmart or in other retailers. So if the user uploads their ticket, they give uh, they give them back uh, a voucher to expand it in 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 the in the Amazon marketplace. So it's a really good way to to say to the users and the client, "Hey guys, we want your data." But we are giving you something in exchange. It could be a voucher. It could be some access to a specific premium content. It could be, uh, I don't know, uh, participating in, in, in a quiz, in a contest, on, or in whatever experience we can deliver to them. But, but I think that the reality today is that the users are expecting something. It could be content. It could be whatever. And I think that's the reason why... Today, in, in marketing and, and, and in sales, in, in, in the usage of digital channels, we need to be uh, really, really focused in creating real relevant content for the users. I think that today, content is, is king, is the king of, of digital marketing. Yeah, and let me add to that, Paolo. One of the things there is not only content, but, you know, and this is, we've been hearing it as marketers for ages now, right? Um, at the right time, uh, you know, sending the right message at the right time to the right person. You know, uh, we've been hearing all of this uh, for ages now, right? Through the right channel. Um, but I think something more than that, we're, we're not able to do that. We're not able to bring those personalized experiences if we don't have automation, right? Before, you know, it was all big bang uh, campaigns, for example, you know, uh, uh, targeted to everybody and nobody at the same time. And uh, now I, I think with automation, we can really bring those those experiences, those one-to-one -one experiences, right? So we can do it at scale, we can do it at real time, and we can do it personalized. Um, so I think that's also something to add to that, right? Um, and of course, we need the data to be able to have those personalized experiences. 
and I and and also just just a thought there. I think data is um, data. I mean, is valuable, of course, but I mean, it's nothing if you don't really uh, process it, right? So, you know, we can have a lot of data and still be blind to what the the user does. So, I think that's where. I think the difference between maybe analytics and data, right? We have to apply analytics to data, uh, process it, um, and then be able to extract those insights. From there, we can channel that information through automation and have those kind of one-to-one -one personalized real-time experiences. And that also makes amazing experiences, right? Um, so, I think that's also something important to take into consideration for this. Absolutely. And, and to add a little bit on that, um, I fully agree with you. Uh, I think that we already have more data probably for most businesses and brands that we need, but uh, most companies has, and we also are failing in transforming that data into knowledge. That difference that you just mentioned regarding analytics, analytics is a way to express knowledge. And what we need to get from the data, data is core central, of course. But if you do not know what you do with data, it's useless. And it's going to be a cost for the brand, for the company, because you need to ensure the, the privacy of the data, the quality of the data, you need to store the data, and that costs money. So you need to be able to get to know the knowledge out of the data. And for doing that, um, this is extremely important in the data world and analytics and AI, is to start thinking about what you need to answer. What are the, the questions that you need to provide answer to? That could be a content, could be a service, could be the purpose of the processes that you have. Once you have that in place, you need to automatize the way you process the data, to transform it, to get the knowledge out of the data. And then a ton of stuff, there is more technical. But the first thing is, what do I need to provide to the users? What do I need to get out of the data? Sometimes you already have that knowledge and you have those, those hypotheses that you could test out with the data and try some uh, campaigns and services and actions in order to confirm or discard those hypotheses. Other moments you could play with the data, what we call it in the data science world and the AI world, and try to identify some trends and things within the data but that's a different way of processing stuff. Yeah. And for that, as, as Delphi was saying before, you will need tools. And that's another really, really hot topic nowadays. Uh, I don't know, guys, if you ever heard about what about one new topic, which is called math tech, which is basically uh, a mix of uh, what we call MarTech, which is marketing technology, and ad tech, that is uh, advertising technology. So that new concept came from merging both worlds and actually did you guys know that there are i think that the data the data is from, from last year but last year we found more than eighteen thousand tools available around math tech so tools for uh web analytics tools for advertising analytics dashboarding uh, data processing data modeling um, i mean there is a, like a huge environment of tools and some companies and some brands could be a little bit lost. I think we, we have a huge responsibility to guide our clients uh, into that use cases into, in the, and, and, and say like, hey, let's think about the strategy. Let's think about what we want to achieve. We want to achieve, I don't know, hyper personalization if we want to achieve like a, a commercial pressure control or whatever. But we, we have the, the huge responsibility to guide our clients into that. And after that, think about what kind of technology they need. I think that we should be agnostics in terms of technology because we, we need to think first about the use cases and the business impact that the use cases are going to, to, to have. And after that, uh, help our clients to choose the best set of technologies uh, to deliver that use cases. So I think that we have a huge responsibility on that. Absolutely. And we also need to say no. Uh, we need, because sometimes the clients already know or they think that they need specific tools or processes or, or campaigns. And it's our job, based on the experience that we have, saying, you know what, probably that's not the best solution for this reason, right? Because otherwise, and this for us happens a lot with AI. We have plenty of clients that say, we need AI, we need 
natural language processing. We need OCR for detecting stuff, and they probably don't need that. And it's a hard conversation to have because you need to convince them with arguments based on the experience that you have. And in, in this case, um, telling them about failures that we had in the past really resonates to them and help them to get the best solution, right? Based on the use case, the business need, and the return of investment of the solution that they're doing or pursuing, actually. With these scenarios in mind, it seems data itself doesn't get the job done. What do you guys do with information? Using data, and as we said before, data is nothing. We have to analyze that information. Uh, so analyzing that information, we know what the customer's perceptions are, what their behaviors are, what their preferences are. And then with this, um, use it, right, to innovate. And um, and that, that ties back to, right, to uh, your points of difference. And I, and I think there's this really good uh, example where there's uh, car insurance and what they're doing is, is so it's usage-based insurance. And instead of so with that information, instead of charging, for example, your insur your car insurance, for example, on you know who you are, they have information and they know what you do and what your behavior is. And so they can charge you based on that. And that would have been great for me during COVID, but I have never used, I think I used my car like five times during COVID. So that would have been great to be able to pay based on my usage, right? And with, with data, for example, now, um, you know, the, the, you, your car insurance can have information on, did you speed? What time of day did you go? Did you, you know, start driving? Was it rush hour? Was it raining? Um, you know, did you corner too fast? All of that information then gives you like so a profiling and then you can, as a brand, um, give uh, a specific, uh, you know, you can charge specifically for that customer. Absolutely. And trying to, to put that into words, what you guys were mentioning, I fully agree with that. I think that in this case, data provides context awareness for the brands. And that's how we try to avoid uh, spamming the clients and telling them what they need when they need that. And that example of the cars and the insurance um, it's perfect for that because that's the context of the people, how they drive, if they speed or not. Yeah. And, and I think it's also part of the, you know, the new type of data, I would say new, but it's already here, right. Uh, that we can, that we can gather, you know, before it was more, you know, demographic, psychographic age income. So who you are. Or you know the you know what you, what your preferences are like that you declare for example right so like what your lifestyle is etc. And I think now I mean you had behavior uh, data like transactional data but I think now and you know Gonsai you're here you're the expert here on this it's we're getting more of unstructured data and I think we're still quite far uh from that you know uh as brands um but i mean it, it's already here we just have to make use of it and uh, i think that really gives us much more context uh it gives us a richer information more qualitative uh information on how uh customers are acting right and that that really can help us give that user uh the right you know or, or give that user value right Hundred percent, and it's not that far actually. And, and for us as users, before the pandemics with Globe, and we used to travel a lot. Um, maybe within the same hour, I had a profile looking for flights and hotels to go to Converge with Globe, and that's some specific use case. Twenty minutes after that, probably I could use the same tool to look for um, flights to go to the Caribbean with a different profile, and it's the same user. The same tools, the same IP, but the moment, the mental moment of the user is different. So data will need to help us to identify those micro moments to target the content or the services that we could provide to them. You probably noticed that Pablo used a phrase that was first uttered 25 years ago. Content is king. 
Its author is Bill Gates, who coined it in an essay published on the Microsoft website in 1996, reflecting like a perfect mirror the marketing reality in 2021. We have a lot of data today. What's becoming increasingly clear is that if we put users' needs before the technology we use to gather that information, we're heading in the right direction. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for more insights on Unscripted Tech, a Globant original podcast where we reflect on developments that will shape our future. To learn more about how we seek reinvention, go to globant.com and follow our show on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. Until next time.